What video game did you have low expectations for, but it turned out to be amazing? Papers please. I mean, I heard it was good but dang. How do you manage to get so much tension in a game where you're literally checking passports? Subnautica. Randomly bought the game in early access and I believe it was on sale on Steam at the time. Not sure. Essentially saw a cool survival game with at least decent graphics underwater. Could be a good time waster I thought. Boy did I underestimate that game. Completely immersed me in its setting in an entirely ocean alien planet. With many brilliant and awe-inspiring sights and species to discover. And many to avoid lol. The music is amazing and completely sets the mood for whatever situation you may be in. I have lost hours upon hours of swimming around a certain biome to just explore the area and listen and see what it had to offer. Even after completing the game a few times and surviving on that planet for however many hours I've put into the game, I still feel like I can jump into it again and feel the same immersive feel it gave me the first time I launched the game. Easily in my top 3 games of all time now. Mountain Blade. I thought it would maybe be fun for an hour, a thousand hours later, and it is still one of my go-to games when I am bored and want to turn myself into a hermit for a bit. Bannerlord. Any day now my faithful vassals. FTL. Faster than light. I didn't understand anything about it but it was on sale for a good price. After an hour of playing I watched some tips and tricks vids on it. Went back in and spent 3 hours on a run that I almost won. I sent two of my crew into the boss ship to take out the guns and was unaware that they don't auto teleport back into the ship when it goes down. Lost them both and died cause I didn't have enough people to take out the weapons on the next phase. I've beaten that boss once, even an hour later I couldn't reproduce it. Shoots hard. Kingdom Hearts 1. To 12 year old me it sounded really dumb I didn't think Disney and Final Fantasy characters would mix well and it just seemed like a bad idea. I ended up picking it up one day because Blockbuster was out of all the other games I wanted and back then I had a much higher degree of trust for Square. And it was fantastic. Civilization 5. Friend of mine gifted it to me last year for my birthday, with me not knowing anything about it, with a message that said, I'm sorry, and you're welcome. 500 hours later, I'm gearing up a Caesar, to march on a Mongolian held Seattle with a giant death robot, and a whole lot of marines. I had high expectations after spending hundreds of hours on Civ 4, and Civ 5 still blew me away. It's like the perfect just one more turn game. The first portal. I haven't played a Valve game before besides Team Fortress 2 so I have had the experience before and I was blown away. Mechanics I haven't seen done as nicely ever again. You really should play the sequel. Same deal with better characters and story. My vote goes to Viva Pinata. It looked so dumb and I had never heard of the show, but the game turned out to be one of the funnest farming and animal sim games I've ever played. I wish they'd re-release this on Steam or something for today's machines. An open world game with no side quest, and only boss fights? That sounds dumb. Me before playing Shadow of the Colossus. Stardew Valley. I grew up playing Harvest Moon so I know my way around a life sim, and given the recent Natsu Marvelous break and the subsequent horrific Harvest Moon titles, I was a little jaded. But I figured, hey, it's $15 bucks. What do I have to lose? Almost 200 hours later and I'm still hooked. That's what it was meant to be. It was supposed to be a Harvest Moon sequel done right because Concerned Ape was so sick of all the bad Harvest Moon games. Paper Mario. The Thousand Year Door. My first Paper Mario was Sticker Star. I played it for like 10 hours, but I never finished it, because of the not so good gameplay, story, and the fact that it was almost impossible to beat on your own, without searching for guides. Then I picked up a bunch of GC games on a garage sale, including TTYD, and oh boy, the gameplay was actually amazing and the story was good, but my favorite part of that game was all of the memorable characters you met during the game. Meanwhile, Sticker Star had toads. Just toads, with no distinctive characteristics. Comma my first Paper Mario was Sticker Star. I'm so sorry. Stardew Valley for me. I watched my GF play and I thought it looked dreadfully boring. A year later and I am itching to go home and play it when I get off of work. I love designing my farm. I love naming my animals. 
I love getting to know the villagers. The music makes me feel relaxed as frick. And I need to know what the frick is at the bottom of that mine. Sleeping dogs. Got it for free thinking it would be another over the top GTA Saints Row style sandbox. But it felt much more down to earth and nuanced in my opinion. Shame it was a financial flop considering how good the reviews were. Spent 5 years working on this game. Glad to see it on this list. I went into Bastion knowing nothing about it. It was a Steam Summer Sale and I vaguely recalled hearing it more than once being decent and worth checking out. Little did I know I was walking into the best indie game of all time. I haven't played Bastion yet but I had a similar situation with Transistor. I highly recommend it if you haven't played it. Mirror's Edge. I thought a first person Parker game wouldn't work but the gameplay was fun as well and it had a really good ambient soundtrack. The story was garbage though lol. I love the aesthetics of that game. I wish they hadn't screwed up the second one so bad. Dishonored. Went and knowing nothing about it and came out absolutely in love with it. I've probably played that game 10 times with different playstyles. I actually disliked the game the first time I played it and played it just 10 minutes or so. Later on I decided to give it another try and realized that I had misunderstood its genre and started playing it differently and now it's one of my top 10 favorite games. XEOM. For me, if someone had told me it was a turn-based strat RPG, it would have been way I up my butthole. Great gameplay, story and world building. The only game in recent memory that I beat and instantly started right back up. Good DLC too. Just a great series of games. Borderlands. I heard it was only good in multiplayer so I never bothered with it until one month it was part of the PS Plus games. I had a blast playing it single player. Hilulu Traveler. Doom. 2016. I thought it was just going to be a generic AAA FPS and I only bought it because A. It was the Steam Summer Sale and B. I wanted to have a game that could push my new PC to the limits. Doom is now one of my favorite games, 5th to be exact. I don't know what I expected EU3 to be like, probably some cutrate civ like strategy game to kill the time, but I certainly did not expect to put 100s, maybe 1000s of hours into paradox games as a result, inadvertently learn European geography really well, pick my major in college as a result of the game, try to learn a new language as a result of the game. Don't think any one other media purchase has been as impactful on my life. I just made it to 2000 hours in EU4. I am studying political science, and I'm still amazed how realistic that game is, in terms of multilateral interactions. Dragon Age Origins. I was and still am a big fan of Baldur's Gate, but everything Bioware produced after that I can barely stand. Up until Dragon Age Origins, it brought me back. At least for a while. This one right here. I was a huge Mass Effect fan back then. Still am. And had never even heard of this game. I found out there was a special armor I could get an ME2 if I had DA. Oh so I ran out and bought DA. Oh. I'm pretty sure I ended up sinking more time into that than I did ME. Minecraft. Spent several years making fun of a friend for it. Told him it was a boring. Clearly childish game with absolutely no graphics quality and no worth. Finally he's like, okay, we'll make a bet, you download the demo, if you like it, I'll buy you Minecraft for Christmas, if you don't, I'll stop posting Minecraft videos on my YouTube channel for 3 months. Terrible bet on his part, but I took it, adamant that I would hate it. Jokes on me, I played the demo for 14 hours straight, he won. I got a free Minecraft from it, now everyone in my family plays, along the same lines, Terraria, my best guy friend wanted me to play, sent me pictures, I was like James this is like a 2D platformer crap version of Minecraft, why would we play this so he nudged me on and we started playing, never, ever, in my 13 years of playing video games, has any game both fascinated me and freaked me the heck out more than Terraria, I mean, yeah, I've played horror games that scared me, I love Resident Evil games, but being this tiny ponytailed pixel with a weak butt sword and cape and 3 days into playing our first map there's a freaking blood moon. Dear god almighty, I don't know what it is about Terraria, 
but some of the things in it get me so serious. I'm sad Minecraft has such a big reputation as a kid's game. It's easily my most played game ever. I think your friend played you haha nothing is better than your first couple days playing the game. Honestly, if I could pick any game to play for the first time again, I'd probably pick Minecraft. Mafia. Looked like a crappy GTA 3 clone from the premise. Then you just get swept away into one of gaming's most unique settings and enjoy a well-rounded story. Whoa. The original Mafia was an absolute blast to play. I remember feeling so sucked into that game. Particularly the story. And the ending. Slime Rancher. Didn't think it would have much depth or gameplay but almost 200 hours later and it's one of the most entertaining casual games I've ever played. Same thing for me. I put maybe 10 minutes in. Couldn't get into it. After a few weeks I gave it another try. Where it promptly consumed me for probably 2 weeks. SteamDB says I put almost 24 hours into it. I'll definitely go back in when they add some more stuff. Easily Minecraft. I honestly didn't see the appeal to the game for a while. Eventually I ended up really liking it. Never before had I seen an open sandbox world. It was amazing. I could do way more than I thought I could do beforehand. 7 years later and I'm still playing even in college. Yeah, I started playing because it was a cheap coop game me and my friends could all play. Even though I'm a crap builder it's fun as heck to explore and just mess around. Pokemon. I was a kid during first general. I saw everyone with their Pokemon cards and I also had seen a little bit of the show, and I hated it all. I just thought it looked so dumb I had wanted nothing to do with it. Finally got my hands on Pokemon Yellow and decided to give it a chance. 30 years old now, I've got Pokemon Sun in my 3DS and I've sunk in hundreds of hours across all the Pokemon generations. Borderlands 2. Got it on a steam sale knowing nothing about the game other than the hype from friends. Was with every penny. I love their quest progression. Shoot shooty mix you'd face in the face. Super Mario Bros. 3. After the weirdness and tone shift of Mario 2, I had no idea at the time that it was a reskin. I had very little positive expectations for Mario 3 when it came out, though. Freaking amazing that such a fun, incredibly rich and complex game can be controlled in such a versatile fashion with two buttons and a Swiss cross. SMB3 is probably near the peak of 2D platformers, and it's probably considered that peak to some. Even though I didn't grow up with it, I'll always love SMB3. Hollow Knight. At $15 I expected a simple little metroidvania but it quickly became my favorite game. That game is worth more than most AAA games. Honestly I think this answer isn't higher because everybody who has played Hollow Knight knows how freaking incredible it is. I went into this game with high hopes and was still blown away. Currently tied with Ori and the Blind Forest as my favorite platformer of all time. Warframe. Really didn't expect anything from a free game, but it turned out to be fantastic. Made me question the whole $60 for all AAA titles, when in reality you're paying an equal price for unequal games of various quality and content. Picked it up winter break of high school and ended up putting in like 70 hours in 2 weeks. Absolutely amazing game for being free. Hatoful Boyfriend. You think it's just a silly parody of a dating sim where you romance pigeons but the writing turns out to be really good and then it suddenly slips into a tragic horror story and before you know it you're getting all emotional about fake birds. Fun fact, Hatoful Boyfriend was original an April Fool's joke that was expanded on. Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor. When I first heard of it I expected it to be a crappy Lord of the Rings remake of Assassin's Creed. Turned out that it's actually freaking great. I bought it a few weeks ago and I have killed an orc captain named two Garg Hot Tongs 32 times, not even kidding, and he keeps coming back. The worst part is he is an ambusher so he shows up randomly and attacks me at very inopportune times. Rimworld. I wasn't even sure I liked the idea. Watched a friend stream it for a few minutes and said I'll give it a try. I spent so many hours building a mountain kingdom. I'm disappointed I had to scroll this far down to find it. It really is the perfect storyteller. It's basically D&D in a fixed setting. Monument Valley. It's a quick game. Playable in a day or so during downtime. But it's beautifully done. The puzzles are borderline genius at times, and just fun at others. 
There's not a moment in the game that I felt wasn't thought through. Mad Max game. Usually games branching from movies are crap but it turned out to be bloody amazing. Would recommend any day. I loved Mad Maximum. I know it was considered a mediocre game but it hit that sweet spot of me. The tone was perfect and it looked amazing. Loved getting caught in the storms. Earthbound. It got a 3.0 out of 5 in Game Pro, I think. But it had fart jokes, so twin bro and I wanted to try it. We were 12. What 12 year old wouldn't like a video game with fart jokes? It blew our minds. The story is amazing. The gameplay is fun, and way harder than one would expect from what looks like a kid's game. Those freaking guardian diggers. We've both played through it a few times. At my wedding. I'm going to walk down the aisle to one of the songs from that game, and it will probably make my twin bro cry. Dark Souls. Whenever I heard anything about it everyone was always so focused on how difficult it was and I thought it was going to be just another example of a game being cheap and unfair in the name of difficulty. Had no interest in buying it. Then a friend let me borrow it and I absolutely fell in love with the game. The music is awesome. The world is eerie and somewhat depressing but it was captivating at the same time, and I always wanted to see what came next. The gameplay is fantastic and while it does have its bulls moments looking at you Analundo archers, it was rare that I ever thought how the heck was I supposed to avoid that. More often it was oh I see what I did wrong. Now I'm a huge fan of the whole Soulspawn series and I can't wait for Sekiro. Crackdown 2 Bought it at a pawn shop with my allowance for like $10. Thought it would be crap, but ended up putting loads of time into it and having a blast. Story was terrible though. Britney's Dance Beat. This was back in the early 2000s. We saw it at E3. My roommate went up and tried it and I was making fun of him. Then I tried it. It was one of my favorite games that year. Beat Saber. I thought it was just hype because of those ungodly annoying videos on Facebook, but it's actually one of the best games I've ever played. Terraria. I got the game on sale with my wife. We played it and I felt it was just going to be a 2D Minecraft. Holy crap it's good. Also the mod Thorium and Cataclysm quadruple the content. Minecraft. My wife really wanted to play it. I thought it looked pretty stupid tbh. My thought was how can you spend hours just building stuff. Turns out the game is so much more than that, although it is also that. I'm typically a console gamer more interested in FPS or RPG so I did not see this as an option until she bought it and got me hooked. Red Dead Redemption. The only thing I heard about back in 2010 was that it was Grand Theft Horse and not as good as GTA 4. I put off getting it until August of that same year and had low expectations. But after playing it, I was so glad to be wrong. The only thing I wish I could go back and do is ride into Mexico for the first time again with far away playing and having that chill go down my spine. Kator Shoujo, a visual novel dating sim, made by nerdy westerners and set in Japan. It's about dating girls with physical disabilities. The name Kator Shoujo translates to broken girl. The idea came from 4chan. There are multiple explicit sex scenes. Kato Shoujo is probably one of the most thoughtful, emotional video games I have ever experienced and does an outstanding job of portraying people with disabilities in a positive light. Dang now I feel stupid for not answering this. Kato Shoujo was an amazing roller coaster ride and really made me think hard about my own responsibilities and consequences of my actions. Which was totally opposite to what I was expecting. Kingdoms of Amala. Reckoning. I was bored and picked it up from Gamestop. It ended up being a ton of fun as they let you completely respect your ability points at any time. Also the story was a lot of fun and the abilities in the game were great looking and felt powerful. Definitely recommend it. Love me some chakrams. Quite a few, honestly. Dragon Age Dragon's Dogma were both games I picked up looking for a good fantasy game. Took me until August this year to properly play Dra and love it, but Dragon's Dogma is easily in my top 5 games of all time. Similarly, a friend lent me Mass Effect and said it would be brilliant. I'd heard the complaints about 3's ending, but even they couldn't stop the series being an easy top 3, with ME2 and 3 being 2 5 games as well. Don't enjoy playing 1 as much anymore though, age like milk in the gameplay department. 
Honestly, most of the games I play are either games I've been excited for, games people recommend to me or games that people tell me to avoid. Case in point, I kinda like Sonic 06 unironically. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.